Rob here. Uh, I'm here to do the video for the two, Vinyl Tag 2018. I joined the VC video live late last year, so I didn't really do that one. So I figured I'd do this one, and a couple people have asked me to do this one. So I'm going to do it. I'm kind of just grab the stuff um, that I thought I would need quickly. Um, I'm going to go by most recent on these questions, like picture disc, blind spot, you know, art. I'm going to go with the most recent stuff that I like or found, or yada yada yada. So we're going to go with that. So I'm going to start it out with the, uh, and for you short attention span Farleys, um, this may be a long video. Anyway. Um, Question number one is, the first video you saw in the VC, I was searching for a, uh, a band called Rocks, R-O-X-X, -X, um, and when I punched it in YouTube, uh, it, Scott's video came up. I'm like, well, maybe he has the album. So I watched the video, and that, you know, Scott Waters, I'm sorry, that was the first introduction into the VC uh, and obviously it was Rock's records that I picked up so I mean I was looking up looking for Rock's uh, with the Rust and Diamonds album anyway that was the first VC I, I, I saw seen uh, and then from there I just got caught up in it I watched a couple of his videos I'm like wow this is really cool and if you watch my introductory video, I talk about how I've been watching vinyl start to grow since like 2013. So I've been keeping an eye on it, but I'm like, is this just going to drop out again, yada, yada, yada. So I watched Scott's video, and Scott was still pulling up new, you know, current few years and talking about Rock's records on the video, and I'm like, well, hell, man, now I feel like I, I, I want to do this and get, get back into it. Uh, believe it or not, I have not been collecting vinyl again that long. Um, I'm just buying in bulk. <laughs> but uh, Scott Waters would be my first video introductory into the VC. Uh, and through him, I, I found, you know, uh, DJ Legion, Andy's Vinyl Den, um, Farley, and Ron Haggerty, and anyone from there discovering other guys. Um, I really enjoyed being in the VC since then. I hate doing this, but you know, I'm not a big fan of cameras and pictures and shit like that. But I really enjoyed this. I really enjoyed the getting back in the vinyl. You know, you get the feel, you get the sound, you get the artwork. And I'm a big artwork fan. I love the art behind music. I mean, there's books on that stuff, you know? Anyway, I'm making that question a little too long. Scott Waters would be my first video that sucked me in, addicted me in, <laughs> again, to the vinyl uh, collecting. Fave record from the VC. Um, there's a lot of them. Uh, again, talking about Scott and Rock's records, I knew nothing about Rock's records until I ran across Scott's video. And obviously, I don't think I have anything up here right now. Oh yeah, Sacred Warrior. Obviously, they're reissuing and remastering some quality bands. You know, a lot of Christian bands, but whatever. Good music is good music. Um, and stuff like that. So, my favorite record I discovered is actually from a VC member named Julian Lopez. Hey, girl. Um, my very old kitty here. Come here. Let's make me in here for Lisa. There we go. This one won't bite me. This is for Ellie, Lisa. This is my old girl. She's 18 or 19 at this point. She's an old one. She got the gray in her face. All right, sidetrack. Come on, girl. Favorite album discovered through the VC. And that is Castle. It might be hard to see. I'm going to take it out. Uh, there's a band called Castle. Ashley Julian Lopez sent me this, too. Uh, uh, v yeah, VCLT band called Castle and the album's called Under Siege good doom 
Um, early Black Sabbath sound with female vocals. You may not like the sound of that, but it really, really works. And uh, I really like it. And their albums seem to be a little different every time. Like, they have a little different twist on their sound, a little different twist on the vocals. Um, I've got that on vinyl. I think it's the only thing I have by them right now. I need to get their other one. But uh, that would be my favorite record to be of the VC. VC. What are your other hobbies? Uh, my main hobby has always been music. I've been collecting music since I was a kid, and my mom would give me her stuff as she got rid of it. You know, give me the old seven inches, and uh, I even had some eight tracks back in the day. Uh, so it's always been music. Uh, I went from vinyl, cassettes, to CD, now I'm back to the vinyl. I'm actually phasing out cassette, I mean CDs, little by little, except for the rare stuff and, you know, stuff like that I'll never get rid of unless I'm on my deathbed or something. But uh, uh, my other hobbies are, I, I'm a huge hockey fan. Uh, Philadelphia Flyers are my one team and LA Kings are my, are my number two team. My favorite hockey player is actually a king and that's Luke Robitaille. I don't care about the Penguins in New York here, he's always going to be a king to me. Um, and I collect a lot of, I used to collect a lot of hockey memorabilia. Um, I got rid of a lot of that as well. And now I just keep my most sentimental stuff. I mean, I'm a huge Robotite collector, as I said. It was a retirement poster from Poster Night, and it's signed by him. Got a cheap hockey stick blade signed by him. And these are all certified stuff that I've had certified or got or purchased certified. Uh, just a crappy stick, I just wanted the black blade. Uh, jerseys galore. Uh, one of my favorite younger Flyers players is Simone Gagne, who was actually with the Kings for a while. A lot of the <clears throat> ex young Flyers went to the Kings for a while. Jeff Carter, Mike Richards, and stuff like that. Um, a lot of these still have tags on them because I don't really wear hockey jerseys. I just buy them to have them stored. I mean to have them shown. Um, this is their... This is my favorite version. King's jersey. That's a rubber tie. And... Yeah, we got the old school rubber tie. Marcel Dion, Charlie Simmer days. This is when they were going out and Robotai was coming in. And finally, this is a really big collector's piece. Um, Luke Robotai and Mario Lemieux were part owners in a was it ECHL. I had trouble remembering those little ones. Uh, they were called the Omaha Lancers. It might be a CH, I can't remember. It's different here in Canada. And when he retired, they released these jerseys. And you can only get them through their website. And there's only 20 of them, as you can see. Uh, these are Robitaille, and he's, he didn't play for them. He just owned them, but these were part of the retirement thing. And Luke Robitaille, and they're numbered out of 20. It also came with a hat. But when I had flood damage downstairs, my hat got mold on it, so it was kind of screwed up. But that was, it came as a set, and it brought 12 of 20. So I'm a, I'm a big Robotai collector, st I mean, you know, still. If I find something of his I like, I, I'll pick it up, but love hockey. That would be my other hobby. And I don't really have much more than that. I mean, I do like, you guys have seen my garage and my license plates wall and the beer cap magnet thing I do. I mean, I don't really have other hobbies because a lot of it is focused on music. <laughs> I spend a, a lot of time listening to music, pretty much everything I do. Music's on. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm nasally still. Um, why did you start collecting CDs or vinyls? Well, as I just said, I started collecting when I was a kid. I mean, barely remember 
stuff. You know, I just grew up on everything. My mom gave it to me and went from there, and I got that Judas Priest hit, and then I was off to the metal, man. Um, so I started with vinyl. I had a sizable collection. Um, I don't know an actual number, but we're talking in the thousands. Um, and then when the CD started to come in, I had a, about 5,000 cassettes too. I had a lot of shit. Um, when CDs started to phase in the CDs, I held off as long as I could. It was like 90, late 91, early 92, I finally traded all of it in to get CDs. And at the time, it was a good time because they were still giving you good money for the stuff, you know. So when you traded in, you did pretty good getting CDs back. Um, that's one of my biggest regrets in life. I wish I'd never done that. Because all the stuff now you gotta buy, I'm paying four to ten times the amount to get it back. So that's a little bit of an ass kicker. But that is, I've always collected music from the time I can remember remembering. Get off that girl. Uh, so, there's that question. Did you used to play an instrument or in a band? Did play in a band for a few years. Uh, nothing big. Uh, I can fake good rhythm guitar. Um, I used to sing. Uh, we've got some demos that my mom still has. I don't even have my own demo anymore. But, uh, you know, we did a couple of shows around and stuff like that, but it was nothing major. Um, we uh, kind of broke up. Uh, the time frame for that hair metal style and alternative is coming in. And all of a sudden, everybody wanted to do covers in the band, and I didn't want to do covers, so we just kind of... And I didn't want to do covers of... We did do a cover of Roadhouse Blues, believe it or not, and you'll be shocked by that in an upcoming question, but we did a good cover of that. That was pretty fun. Um, so, there's that. Uh, have I ever worked in a record store? No, I have not, and I'm glad I didn't because I probably would never bring a paycheck home because I'd probably owe it to them by the end of the, a week or two weeks. Well, back then it was a week. Um, I did have a friend who worked in uh, Wall to Wall Sound back home, and when the bands used to come in for signings, uh, well, his mother worked in there and she had him work on there when she needed security. But. When the bands came in to do signings, I used to be able to get in and meet the band, like literally meet the band face to face behind the scenes, and that's where I met my favorite band, Dokken, twice. Um, met them all, all super, well, super, well, George Lynch has always been a little bit of a loose kind of character, but he was kind of dry, but nice. Uh, Wild Mick Brown was the coolest, um, but they're all great. I mean, I got to meet a lot of bands that way. Uh, especially docking twice was, was my thing. I used to have a jean jacket with their the patch on the back of docking and I had a sign and through the years of moving I lost it unfortunately because it was really cool. I would have cut that out and framed that shit, you know? So there's my record store relationship, I guess. Um, Fave album, album from the year you were born. Well, I was born in 1970. Yeah, I'm older than you think I am. Uh, I didn't have these anywhere, so you get to bear with me. And I looked up some of the albums from 70, and I literally have one. And you would think I would have more, even on um, CD. I mean, I know I've given up a lot of CDs, but I'm trying to stick with vinyl as much as I can. But uh, I guess my favorite album of what I have from 1970, my birth year would be Van Morrison's Moon Dance. I like Van Morrison. I like that style. I like the James Taylor, the uh, you know, Cat Stevens, and I like that style of music. It's very soothing and relaxing. Um, 70s bands, I'm not really huge on most of them. I mean, Zeppelin, they're okay to me. Stuff like that's okay to me. Um, love the Eagles. Love Bad Company. Foreigner, stuff like that, I love. It's like those middle of the roads big bands, they're the ones where my wheelhouse stuff. Classic records you've never heard. Here goes the, I'm probably gonna lose some sub singing again. Um, anything by the doors. I despise the doors. 
Don't know why. I think Morrison's overrated. Five subs. I think Morrison's overrated. Um, I think a lot of lyrics and writers in that time were a bit overrated and influenced by drugs and shit like that. Um, but I can't stand the doors. I, I know there's they're big songs and I know a couple of them small songs. I own nothing from them. I will never own nothing from them. If it comes on the radio, except for Roadhouse Blues, which I do like, there's always that one song they get you with. It's not even their song. But um, that's the only song I will, I will listen to on the radio. The rest of them will go. I don't know what it is. Can't stand them. And that's my opinion. <clears throat> uh, this one I really don't want to answer, but I'm going to be honest with you guys. Uh, my most recent guilty pleasure, like if my Ron Haggerty video wasn't enough guilty pleasure, uh, my most recent guilty pleasure, I'm already laughing. I don't want to hear shit, by the way. We all have them. My recent guilty pleasure <laughs> album, but this has to be a CD because I won't buy it on vinyl. Well, actually, I probably would. And that is Nick Jonas. Yes, I said Nick Jonas. <laughs> He's got a song on here uh, called Chains that I love. I, I mean, I love it. It would probably make a top 100 list of songs that I love. Uh, but sadly, Nick Jonas. And I apologize to all my metalhead friends. I will take my lashes. <laughs> Still can't believe I did that. Alright, next question is Strangest record you own? Well, I don't really buy anything I don't like. And if I buy something blind, which is hard to buy blind anymore because you can just listen on YouTube right on your phone or something, um, I generally will give away or you know get rid of it. Um, I do have a couple of strange records. This one I got as a stiffener in an order. I don't know why I still have it. Um, oh, actually, my other half bought me a Liberace record at a garage sale for a quarter as a joke. Damn it, I should have brought that one in. I still got it. It's in the garage. Bad spot. Um, but when I said I wanted to get back in the vinyl, she actually bought me that, being a smartass. Um, but I guess on hand, damn it, I wish I remembered that. On hand, I guess the strangest thing I would have is a Nina Hagen. Uh, three inch, uh, three inch, uh, three track single. Uh, I listened to it just because it was in such great shape and it's a promo copy. It's probably why I hang on to it, I don't know why. But it's crap on a stick in my opinion. I mean, it's just crap. I remember her from the MTV days and it's just crap on the stick, in my opinion. And you can tell I don't even give two shits because it's only around the cover. It's still inside the... <laughs> Shall we pick this? Again, this is going to be my most recent one. I'm not a huge fan of pick this. The newer ones are good because they sound fine. The older ones are bits, you know, iffy. <clears throat> um, so I want to go with my most recent one. And I buy these mainly to uh, for artwork. Uh, you know, eventually I'm going to do a wall of them, but uh, my most recent one is the Steel Panther record store, Black Friday record store day one, uh, and I'm not sure if it's going to show up in there, but I got it in the sleeves as well, so I'll take it out, and it's a new album from 2017, it's called Low of the Bar. So that would be my most recent pick disc. I have a Wasp, Wasp one, I have Judas Priest one, a Quiet Riot, I, I mean I got a few of them. I pick them up cheap, I mean that's the only reason I, if I pick them up cheap, I'll pick them up to hang, you know, eventually, and then I'll get them done. All right, now to the next question. Best posthumous album release, album release. Uh, this is going to be one of my multiple ones, but somebody else already used this, but it was mine to use too, and I'm a bigger Witherfall fan. <laughs> anyway, the band's Witherfall, and the drummer died 
passed away after the, the production of this album. Um, pretty sure it's Carl Sagan. Adam Sagan, I'm sorry. Adam Sagan passed away after the album, like just after the album, unfortunately. So that would be my most posthumous release of this year, of that year. I that whole year thingy. And I'm out there with the uh... Alright, i this later. No, I can't do it now. Sorry, guys. I hate the sound of these Blake sleeves, but they're really nice sleeves. Um, next question, why I'm doing this, instead of making you bored as shit and add time to the video. Um, Compulsively collect. Well, that's ironic because that's what's. I may or may not compulsively collect this band. And before you go saying, wow, that's a bit over the top. Well, they're all. Oh, shit. I showed that by accident. That one don't count. Uh, the releases are different, but not all the same release. There's a green vinyl, red vinyl or wine vinyl, the gold vinyl, the, which one is this? Is this the self? Is that darker one? This is their central media release when they got picked up one, and this is their independent release, which the cover is a little brighter on the independent. It's a little more matte and darker on the... So anyway, I may be compulsively collecting these guys with a fall. I don't know. I, I, I think I may like them a little tiny bit. All right. Best blind spot by artist by. And I'm going to go with my most recent. Although it's not really a blind spot by because I know who they are. I've seen the video and I knew who the, the singer was. Uh, so it, it's kind of a blind. Once I've seen the video, I just... Instantly went and looked it up and I bought it. And that's a piece, Sinister. This is both uh, Carmen and Vinny a piece band. Um, they literally both play at the same time on the album. You know, they play offsetting drumming. Um, but it has a, a few singers on here, you know, multiple singers. Uh, Paul Shortino, the big note for me, is on here. Um, give you a second here and I'll read off some of that. Um, it's just a really good, good album. I mean, it made my top 17 list this year. It's such a, it's such a, it snuck up on me, man. It was just so a quality uh, release. Uh, Jimmy Crean does some, um, I'll read some of the players on this. It's kind of like a, a, a guest list kind of album. Uh, let's see, where we at here? Paul Shortino. Um, Mick Sweeta from the Bullet Boys and King Cobra's on here. Johnny Rod from uh, uh, Wasp and LA Guns, if I remember correctly. Craig Goldie, Dio, and, and uh, Jafria. Let's see, Chaz West on vocals. Uh, who else we got here that people would recognize? Robin McCauley from MSG. Uh, he's on here and Grand Prix and stuff like that. Uh, let's see. And the drums do switch off in some songs. They do, you know, Vinny plays on one song and uh, Carmine plays on another. Tony Franklin on bass. Paul Shortino again. Bumblefoot's on here. Uh, Tony Franklin, I said that. Craig Oldie. Scotty Brew. There's a Japanese guy on here. I do not know his name. Uh, so basically, it's more like basically John Crean, Paul Shortino on here. So, but it's a killer, killer. Essentially, a blind buy because I heard one song and I, you know, I bought it. But uh, that would be my most recent kind of blind buy. If it's the scenario right now. Um. Favorite album cover. I'm going to go with uh, my most recent favorites. Although there's a couple I really, really like. 
um, when I read that, this popped out of my head, and that's a new, a new band. I get another super group kind of deal, and that's Sons of Apollo. I love this album cover. I like these um, epic style, the like Game of Thrones banners, insignias, emblems. And I don't, I don't like Game. I, I've never seen an episode of Game of Thrones, but I like that look, that marbleized look. That's a really cool looking album. I don't think there's anything art. It's just all the band inside. But that would probably be my, one of my favorite. And the recent one I got from Rocks Records again. And I might as well work for you, Bill. Because <laughs> uh, and that's this one. This this thing really. I've seen it. You know, one of the sales, and it looked really, really cool. But when you get this sucker in hand, and you can really look at it. That's a badass looking album cover. Anyway, sidetracked again. Uh, where are we at now? Plants by an artist. Favorite album cover did that. A musician you have met. I I've met a lot. Uh, I used to hang out back home in Philadelphia in a, a, a rock club called Empire Rock Club. And I met almost everybody that came in there. Because it was just, you were a, a smaller band then. You came in there, Cinderella, Britney Fox, Tease. Uh, Early Poison Paris was there. Um, uh, my God, now I'm blanking out, of course. Pyramid, I mean, all the bands back in the day. Um, Heaven's Edge, uh, all kinds of stuff like that was back there in the day before they closed down and turned into a skating rink. But uh, I guess my two notables are my two favorites. Uh, Malmsteen I met, not a very good experience. I met him twice. Both were crappy experiences. And I met Docking. Uh, twice as you heard earlier so but I obviously had to meet them at the small club uh, show a record with sentimental value I'm going to get again go to my most recent one that that hits me in the fields and something about this band does um, I don't talk about personal stuff a lot you know like real personal stuff but I deal with uh, depression, major depression, and um, anxiety. Uh, coming out of my major depression, I picked. I, you tend to, and outcome of that is picking up anxiety. Great, right? So it really happened to me when it hit me. I was in the middle of driving, and you know, I thought I was having a heart attack. You know, I pulled over, and I'm like, you know, tried to calm down before I. Took myself to the hospital, and then I realized what it was, and you know it was really bad. So the last few years, I really had to deal with that. I don't let it beat me. There are times when it takes you down, but I, I, I fight. Everybody fights. Everybody has their own battle, so I, that's my battle. And a band that hits me a lot or two, and it's Within Temptation, and uh, a band Six AM. You may not realize it, but if you went and listened to their albums, uh, the Heroin Diaries. Yeah, it's about his drug addiction, but if you listen to the songs, you can ha interpret it to your personal problem, your personal issue, your personal disease, whatever it is. You can insert yourself into that album. That's one of my all-time favorite albums because at the time where I was coming out of the bad shit, that was there and it fit my feelings as a person I am. And a couple, uh, two years ago, I think 15, or I think it was very, I think it's it, mostly in 16, but at the end of 15. Um, this album came out by the band, and it's called for Prayers for the Damned. It has a lot of dark undertones on this one. You know, they did a double release, essentially. This came out first, and then Prayers for the Blessed. And it has a lot of dark undertones, you know, about Prayers for the Damned. Do you feel like you're damned, or, you know... Um, a uh, song on there called "When We Were King," when we were, oh my God, when we were gods. You know, it's about being stronger and younger, and and you know, it just fits the scenario in our minds as we get older. Um, no matter the shape you're in, you are getting weaker. You are getting older. You know what I mean? So it's it's fitting. It's a fitting sentimental album to me, whether you like them or not. Um, their albums tend to, well, not all of them. Uh, Heroin Diaries, uh, Vintage, 
modern vintage and yeah, one after that or before that. I can't remember. There's two in there that seem to be kind of B-side kind of albums in my opinion. A couple of good songs on there. But The Heroin Diaries, Prayers for the Damned, and, and Prayers for the Blessed are really home hitters for me, uh, sentimental-wise. Sentimental so. And again, we all get, you can listen to a thrash metal and get sentimental out of it too. I mean, it, it's what hits us personally that we call sentimental. So that would be that. And there's a little bit of insight of my personal stuff. Well, I don't know why my phone keeps cutting off, but uh, uh, it cut me off when I was checking out the uh, editing the video. I noticed the last two questions were missing because it ended abruptly again. So I'm just going to jump on here today and pop out the last two questions. So if you're wondering why I think it's got changed, there you go. Um, uh, so we're at, we were at the sentimental value. I did that one. It cut me off, but I got to the point. Uh, Fan, favorite album that no one really knows about? Well, um, most of us in the VC are pretty up on our music, you know? So, I'm going to use this album. I mean, I can use some friggin', uh, you know, obscure band, but I mean, that's, I think I'm going to use this album. Um, I think it get over, gets overlooked because Tate's not in the band anymore, and a lot of people weren't fans of the band later on because their style did change quite a bit. But the last two albums, they've gone back to that old sound, and that's uh, Queen's Rights Condition Critical, a Human Critical. I'm sorry, I think I'm quite right. Um, but this is a fantastic. This is better than their, their album before this with the new singer uh, Todd Latore. Uh, Todd Latore is a Jeff Tate clone, man. Um, for you, for you, for you guys that don't know, uh, Todd Latore actually sung in Crimson Glory for a while because he can also do the vocals for that too. The dude is super talented. I think the guys that, you know, and I'm very picky about replacing a singer, but if you're going to do it, you try to replace it with a singer that sounds similar. Well. This guy sounds great. They're back to their old style of, you know, that Queen Drake sound. Modernized, of course, but it has the old sound. So, that would be my favorite album that no one knows about. I mean, I think people don't know about it because they kind of blow it off. And, I, and Queen Drake's one of my favorite bands. Jeff Tate's one of my favorite vocalists. So, uh, for me to say that is quite a big deal. And lastly, last question is a favorite favorite album. I don't know well. I don't. It's kind of a weird question in my opinion, but um, everything I buy, I know or I know the band. There's no such thing as a blind buy anymore, really, because you can listen to anything you want anywhere. Samples, YouTube. You can find out what something sounds like before you buy it. But I guess I'll go with my newest album because I have not listened to it at all yet. Well, my. One of my new ones, I guess. Uh, and that's Delane's new one, Decade of Delane. It's a live album. I haven't had the chance to listen to it. I've got so much other new stuff that comes in, so the live albums kind of fall back um, on, the, on the back burner because I'm not really a big live album fan. Um, I just buy them mainly to finish the discography of that band. Uh, and Delane, I happen to love this band. All the bands, like, most of the bands I have, I love. But uh, that would be the album, I guess, uh, Live at Paradiso. I guess that would be the album I'd have to say I don't know well because I have not listened to it yet. Although I know all the songs on here except for maybe a couple covers, which I didn't even, I haven't even looked at that other than opening it on camera that day. Um, I've been getting so much other stuff in the, you know, mail that I slap on first because I want to hear it. So there's that question. Anyway, this is a long video, I know, but it's kind of, the point of it is to make you talk about yourself and stuff like that, and that's what I did. Um, so, I hope you guys enjoy the video. If you don't, sorry. Uh, not sorry. Sorry I'm not sorry. <laughs> You'll probably just skip through it anyway. But anyway, 
Thank you. Thank all you guys again for uh, watching this and subbing to me. Um, I really do appreciate it.